on WCIA 3 News. COVID-19 is complicating travel plans as millions pack their bags ahead of the busiest season of the year. How your trip could be different on the road or in the skies. And light at the end of the tunnel. After months in labs, drug makers inch ever closer to bringing a vaccine to the shelves. How the race for an emergency vaccine could give the economy a major shot in the arm. And coronavirus closures rocked the calendar and canceled concerts, but it couldn't keep these artists from connecting with a new audience in a familiar venue. How working from home brought music to their neighbors' ears. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. The coronavirus cast a long shadow over the busiest travel season of the year, but still, nearly two and a half million people in Illinois plan to travel this Thanksgiving. Good evening. I'm Mark Maxwell. And I'm Jen Lask. AAA predicts fewer people will travel in Illinois this year than any other year since 2014. WCIA 3's Jared Farmer talked with some travelers to see how the pandemic is changing their plans. About 95% of Illinois travelers will skip the lines at the airport and hit the road to see family this year. That's according to a new study from AAA. But as cases of COVID continue to surge and the state cracks down, some say they feel apprehensive about making concrete plans. Mia Berkeley is a grad student at the U of I returning home for the rest of the semester and winter break. She says her extended family planned on gathering, but are quickly changing plans as it gets closer to Thanksgiving. We were going to all plan to visit cousins, aunts and uncles, a few of us, but due to the cases in Illinois, we're going to limit it to a small amount of us. Urbana's mayor, Diane Marlin, says to anyone who is considering traveling for the holidays to follow state guidelines, which would mean avoiding large crowds and staying home. I am just as frustrated as everyone and, and, and missing my family and friends as much as everyone. And I know how hard this is, but, but we are at the point that we dreaded. The mayor says while Thanksgiving and likely Christmas will have to be different than previous years, if people follow guidelines for the next couple of months, we could start to see cases go down. She says it will take the entire community's cooperation to finally defeat the virus. In Urbana, I'm Jared Farmer, WCIA 3, your local news leader. For anyone who's choosing to go visit their family, the CDC has the following recommendations. Check the infection rate of the area you're visiting, limit the number of people gathering, host outdoors if possible, wear masks and sit six feet apart, open windows to increase ventilation, and have one person do all of the cooking. Area hospitals continue to clamp down and create space as cases of COVID-19 threaten to crowd them out. New restrictions limit visitors going into effect Monday. That's at three area hospitals, Memorial Hospitals in Jacksonville, Taylorville, and Lincoln. Families can still visit patients virtually. The hospital will allow exceptions for one visitor to stay with a child, a mother giving birth, a patient with a disability, or someone in the emergency room. They will also allow up to two visitors for patients in their end-of-life stage. Illinois hit a single-day testing record for the state on Saturday with more than 120,000 people tested. With all those tests, health experts are worried, though, that people who get that negative test result will be lulled into a false sense of security ahead of time with family. Testing is important to try to figure out how many people in that community have the illness, uh, but a negative test isn't a guarantee that you can do whatever you want. Epidemiologist Dr. John Segretti says seeing lines of people waiting to get tested doesn't bring him any kind of relief ahead of the holiday. There are people in line because they either had an exposure or have COVID symptoms, but he also knows a lot of people are here because of Thanksgiving plans. We want to be surrounded by family and just making sure we all stay. Initially, that was the thought, but I think with the new CDC guidelines, we are seriously considering not going and just having Thanksgiving the two of us. Segretti wants to remind people you could take the test today and then get the virus tomorrow and become infectious by Thursday. There's also the possibility that you already have the virus, but it hasn't started showing yet. So you test negative in the morning and could become infectious later on, even in the same day. 
More than 10,000 new cases of COVID-19 have been announced. The Illinois Department of Public Health has also said that there were 76 more deaths. Since the start of the pandemic, health officials say more than 656,000 people have tested positive and 11,506 people have died. The case positivity rate is 11.3%. As of last night, 6,072 people were hospitalized with the virus. Of those, 1,179 were in the ICU and 589 patients were on ventilators. The total number of coronavirus cases in the U.S. crossed the 12 million mark this weekend. Johns Hopkins reporting a surge of more than 200,000 infections this weekend alone. That's a sign the virus continues to spread at a rapid pace. And another reason Pfizer is urging the FDA to grant emergency authorization for its promising COVID vaccine. That vaccine, testing at 95% effective, could become available as early as next month. But it remains unclear how much of it. As many as 25 million doses could be distributed in December, another 30 million in January, and 70 million more combined in February and in March. That's according to the National Academy of Medicine. Each patient would need two doses spread three weeks apart. And local governments could also get a financial shot in the arm, but they have to apply first. The Pritzker administration reminding local government leaders to apply for federal COVID-19 relief funding before the deadline uh, looms large. That starts next month. Congress approved the local cure funds as a part of a relief package back in the spring. The deadline to apply is December 1st, and the money must be spent by uh, the 30th or else Congress uh, ret returns that money. So far, 503 local governments in Illinois have received uh, or, or will get a total of that $112 million, but more than 400 other local governments are still eligible and have yet to fill out their applications. Illinois American water customers want an end to the shutoffs. They're asking the state to step in and block the utility from shutting the water off. Cases of coronavirus are rising in Cunningham Township, and the supervisor says hydration plays a big role in keeping someone healthy. She worries about what could happen to people without water during a pandemic. It is totally unconscionable that Illinois American Water would allow people to go without water during a pandemic. It's totally unacceptable. A representative from Illinois American Water says they are doing everything they can to prevent shutoffs. They've partnered with the Salvation Army for the H2O Help to Others program. People can get up to $200 and possibly more in extenuating circumstances, and more money is available. We have information on those resources on WCIA.com. Well, the coronavirus canceled a lot of concerts on this year's calendar. But for musicians used to expressing themselves, all that creativity, it had to go somewhere. As WCIA3's Gabrielle Cook found out, musicians confined to their homes made their front room into their backstage. One upside to the coronavirus forcing people to stay home was getting to know your neighbors better. That's how Jesse and Brian Stark's next door neighbor became their next bandmate. As soon as it got warm enough, we started coming out to our front yard and we wanted to um, provide some live music in a safe, outside, socially distanced way for our neighbors. When the fiddle sax band first started playing on their front yard, they didn't think it would turn into something bigger, but it did, and they credit it to their unique blend of instruments. It's so different with this type of music. Um, it's been really interesting. I think saxophone and fiddle, and then congas, as well as a cajon. That's how the fiddle sax fusion band was born. With Stephen Busaith on percussion, they started performing every Friday night. Soon, the neighbors caught on, and the front yard started to fill up. So it's been a real fun way to feel like we're giving back and using our talents. And it's also been, you know, beneficial to us to have an audience to perform for during a time when, you know, musicians without an audience just kind of like shrivel up and <laughs> forget the reason that we're playing. The roadside rock stars found seats fill up fast along the sidewalk. So if you couldn't make it to their home, their live stream brought the show to yours. For the people that are um, sitting at home that are that have conditions that are preventing them from leaving the house it gives them a little respite and they they have a chance to to enjoy a concert at home for free in urbana i'm gabrielle cook wca3 your local news leader and if you want to learn more about those upcoming concerts or live streams, you can go to our website, wcia.com. Now, in other news tonight, Eastern Illinois University students developed an app 
for a game to help fight human trafficking. Entrepreneur students teamed up with professors to create this app. It's called Spike Shot. They're also working with a nonprofit called Anything Is Possible. That app raises money selling ads. The lead professor on the project says the more people play, the more they raise to help fight human trafficking. So all things possible does work in the U.S. as well as globally, where they, they interrupt, they find trafficking victims and traffickers, and they rescue people, but they also do the kind of the, the restoration and the counseling side of it as well. Important work and an innovating solution. They're going to continue collecting funds until, uh, until January 1st, the new year. And I know we're just in the middle of November now, but got to talk about snow a little bit, right? A little bit. We had a few folks report some uh, last night and this early this morning. We had Jason Piercy from Fairmount, a little sleet about midnight. Darla Carlson in Iroquois County said they had some snowflakes near Milford. We may get the chance moving forth over the next couple of days. We're going to time that out. You can see on our map here, a little bit is possible. Certainly, though, no impacts expected. We'll time that out for you coming up here right after this.